there follows a documentary trailer for The Curse of the Highgate Vampire that was aired on Discovery Plus around Halloween 2021. The documentary, in my opinion, has nothing whatsoever to do with the case. Indeed, almost everyone was not alive, not born, when the case was ensuing. Valent was, of course, but he's been dead some three years. And um, they did their best to resurrect him even claiming ludicrously that uh, he now haunts Highgate Cemetery according to a bunch of amateur paranormalists that um, are so rank amateurs to be risible. That notwithstanding these people exploiting the case for their own purpose, felt it necessary to produce something which almost everyone who's now seen it wishes they hadn't. Thus, I give you a brief taste from their trailer of the curse of the Highgate Vampire. I've seen something, I'm not sure what it is. I certainly realised it was not human. He genuinely believed he saw something. We need more answers to this. Hello? All your hair stuck up on the back of my neck. What happens next is unbelievable. Show yourself behind me. Ah! Is this evidence of the Highgate Vampire? A Discovery Plus original, The Curse of the Highgate Vampire, streamed now only on Discovery Plus. There now follows what Andrew Gorf, who appears in the documentary, considers <laughs> convincing evidence that David Ferrant walked in Highgate Cemetery haunts it still. Anything to put their mark on the story and to try and make it their own. A more absurd piece of footage you are unlikely to witness. Here it is. <laughs> She's all right, though. Can you keep... Can you keep going down for, for you, OK? Right, hold on, guys. We need to shoot down. Tell me your name. Tell me what you did here. Come to me, you heard. Where are you? I'll come to you if you just tell me where you are. Jump. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, darling. No worries. As a footnote, close to the start of the trailer for the curse of the Highgate Vampire, we are shown the sign for Highgate Cemetery. East. I've seen something, I'm not sure what it is. Um, nothing happened in Highgate Cemetery East. The case of the Highgate Vampire concentrated as far as Highgate was concerned, Highgate Cemetery that is, exclusively 
on the Western Cemetery, Highgate Cemetery West in other words, on the other side of Swains Lane, which bifurcates the two halves of Highgate Cemetery. So one struggles to find anything factually accurate, not that it would be worth doing so given who's contributing to it, that is to say people who had no part whatsoever in the case and have no credentials to talk about it. So they talk about themselves, which is about, is about all they can do. Most curious, I would say, most curious. I certainly realised it was not human. He genuinely believed he saw something. We need more answers to this. Hello. All the hell stuff I put it back in my neck. What happens next is unbelievable. Throw yourself behind me. What is unbelievable, Mr. Gorf, is that you find it unbelievable. Any of it, much less the paranormal claims by a bunch of obvious amateurs. But it suits your purpose and the purpose of others to believe that the spectre, at least, of David Farrand wanders beyond the tomb. Not that he's in a tomb of any sort, but it suits everyone's purpose to believe he wanders in Highgate Cemetery. If he was to be earthbound and be seen as a shade, it would be in the Prince of Wales pub up the road, not in the cemetery. Two captions appeared at the conclusion of the documentary and um, they make no sense to me. One says I don't accept Ferenc's conclusions. How would they know whether I do or not, given that I didn't participate and refused to contribute anything and didn't speak in person to anybody? Moreover, I'm not sure what David Ferenc's conclusions ever were. Um, and that's followed by, I maintain I slayed the Highgate Vampire in 1974, when it is widely known, I have said it often enough in my written works and uh, past interviews, indeed past TV and radio pieces where I've discussed the conclusion to the case in that respect. Uh, vampires cannot be slain or destroyed in any like manner because they are quintessentially demonic. And you cannot slay a demon. All you can do is expel it. Thus, when the demonic entity was expelled through the process of exorcism, that was the end of the Highgate Vampire, which corporeal form returned to its natural condition and how it should have been all along. But nothing was destroyed. Nothing was slain. The other statement they make, which appears apparently at the end of the programme, is that Sean Manchester did not respond to the statement about him in the programme. Well, how could I? I haven't seen the programme. I'm not uh, privy to it in any form. Uh, so how can I respond to the statements about me when I'm not aware of what those statements are, which just underscores how absurd the whole exercise was from beginning to end. It then goes on to say, 
I was contacted about participating in the programme, but declined to take part. I was contacted initially by the producer and later, or perhaps it was around a similar time, by the director. And all I did was remind them of my much publicised statements regarding the last time I appeared in a television documentary, which was 2011, being my last, my very last, and that I declared in 2013 that I am not available for any form of interactive interview whatsoever. That much was brought to their attention, that much they knew. So to say I didn't respond to any statements about myself is disingenuous. As for any statements about me in the program, I'm still clueless because I really and truly haven't seen the program. It is on a subscription channel after all. And quite obviously not one I subscribe, well I don't subscribe to any channels to be fair. So these are the sort of people who make these sort of documentaries which in my view are parasitic and pointless and serve no useful purpose other than to line the pockets of those trying to sell a product which is a stolen product. Even the title has been stolen from one of my groups. The Curse of the Highgate Vampire has been a private group I administrate on Facebook and have done for many years. So everything about this outfit is disingenuous. No wonder they conscripted people like um, Ferenc's biological son, who probably knows less than the average man in the street, but what he does know, he's been told by his father who couldn't uh, repeat the same version twice. And um, people have made their own mind up. And I've had many communicate their feelings about the piece to me. And basically it's, don't bother. It's, um, it's a hatchet job aimed at doing you harm and boosting the name of what they consider to be my enemy. Well, certainly no enemy now, but strictly speaking, I didn't consider him an enemy then. This image is from the last time I appeared and contributed to a television documentary and it was filmed actually on the anniversary of the very first time um, my name was to appear widely in the media and that was the 27th of February 1970 under the front page feature headline Does a Vampire Walk in Highgate? This would be uh, on the 27th of February 2011 and uh, the documentary itself went out shortly afterwards I think following month or the end of the following month but I announced at the time that I wouldn't be doing any more 
television or for that matter radio. When you look at this appalling nonsense that the Curse of the Highgate Vampire Discovery Plus offers, you begin to understand why. We live in such different times where those who believe are quite separate and castigated by those who do not. 